Good morning, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, the next car. This was delivered yesterday while I was at work. Um, 61 plate, what's that, 2000, late 2012. Uh, I don't know when it's uh, registered. I've literally done nothing to this car, not even opened the door yet. It was delivered yesterday while I was at work. Or well, last night, I should say, about half past eight last night it was delivered, quite late. Um, it is a convertible. Nice shiny black, a bit dirty, but it looks to be in pretty good condition, apart from the obvious at the front. Excuse the wind, it's a very cold, windy day today. Um, I don't know what that means on the back. It looks like it says ice. I don't know why I would say ice. Um, yeah, so it's an, it, it was down as a pop spec, but it's got lounge bumpers on it. It's got air con. Uh, oh, it hasn't got steering wheel controls. Let me open the door. So I haven't, I haven't even been in it yet. I've got two keys, which is good. So I haven't tried the roof, obviously. Hopefully it'll work okay. It's done 45,000 miles, which on co-part said 70 something. Seats are a bit, little bit cracked. Leather's a bit cracked on the seats, but hey ho. Looks pretty clean inside, not too bad. Doesn't smell of anything nasty like some of the cars. So we've got no steering wheel control. So it is a lounge, it is a pop spec, but it's obviously been upgraded. It's got aircon. Uh, it's got a nice set of alloys on it. Let's just hope the roof works. So let's have a look in the boot. What have we got in the boot? Let's have a look. Spare wheel. No manuals with the with the car, unfortunately. No service history or anything like that, but that's not unusual. A bit green on the back, so obviously that'll be cleaned. Sopping wet roof, as they, I suppose it's been raining on it. So, yes, yeah, so I don't know what this. I never know what any of these symbols mean on the windscreen. D, what's that? D. Two Ds, possibly a B, a Z, a two, an R. I don't know. And again, ice written on there. No idea what that's all about. So as you can see, it's uh, front damage. Looks like that tip might be very, very slightly bent over, but as you know, that's no problem. That side's not gonna be touched. Um, headlights, completely gone. It's completely smashed, I need a new headlight in there. Bumper should hopefully be arriving today. Bonnet, I haven't found a bonnet. Well, there is a bonnet around. Um, but it's got a little bit of damage to the side of it. I don't really want to pay £150 for a damaged bumper. But if I can't get one in colour, I will we'll have to. Um, I don't buy pattern bonnets anymore. I've bought three in the past and they are so flimsy. When you uh, struggle to get the bonnet shut, once you've added a new front on, which you know takes adjustment often. I've bent them, I've dented them, they're awful. They're really awful. Bumpers, you can get away with pattern bumpers. I've had quite a few of those, they've been fine. Um, but the pattern bonnet's just a no-no. They're ru absolute rubbish. Um, yeah, so um, we'll get the bonnet up and we'll have a look under there, see what we can see. Right, so the bonnet's up. As you can see, it's been pushed back. The front panel's been pushed back quite a long way. The That often breaks. So obviously there's a new radiator, which I've got, I've bought already. Uh, in fact, I've got a front panel in the garage with a radiator on, so I'll use that. Although I've bought a radiator as well. Uh, don't think the airbox is broken, apart from the usual thing of that breaking. They always seem to go, but it's still on the car, so I can glue that back on. That's not a problem. Um, shine a torch. Oh, turn the torch off. So down there, the chassis leg looks okay. As I say, I think the tip's probably bent over, but apart from that, it's all right which is a plus. That side's not been touched. So that side's fine. So, don't know whether the air conditioning's gonna be any good or not. It looks relatively straight. It's much better if I don't have to replace that. Um, Cost-wise, they're about 47 pounds, I think they are. Um, it's not a hassle to put one on, but if the aircon is uh, 
it's still holding gas and it's cold even sometimes even if they're a little bit bent which that looks a little bit bent it looks like it's because it's been pushed backwards i think the whole front panel has been pushed backwards and probably the um the actual radiator fins and the condenser fins are probably all right so i won't know till i get the bumper off um as so i got this car half eight last night the reason i'm out here now i am actually going to work today i start work at one o'clock and it's currently just after nine i think um but my driveway is being done on thursday as you can see the crazy paving on this driveway has been here probably almost since the house was built well, this is all being redone it was supposed to start on monday and i've got a call from my neighbor as you can see it's a shared driveway um, i got a call from my neighbor yesterday saying that uh, the builder wants to start either wednesday or thursday today's tuesday so i'll put them off till thursday i've taken annual leave for tomorrow so i'm got to get this drivable tomorrow which i can then take uh, somewhere else to my mother-in-law's house about a mile away put it on her driveway while our drive's being done as you can see there's the white one out there on the road that's all taxed mot'd etc still got a couple of bits to do on it and get a new mot but it's, all, it's still got its current mot so that's able to park out, out on the road once the drive's done i'm having the drive also done in front of the house as well so it'll give me a little bit of room to put one of these cars on when i need to because uh, parking's a bit of a problem on our road so yeah so this morning i'm gonna spend maybe a couple of hours out here before i have to go to work uh so i'm gonna reposition it slightly because it's sort of a bit, a bit too far over to towards my neighbors so i need to remove it before i do anything else and then i'm going to take the bumper off have a look at the damage underneath and maybe possibly take the front panel off i'll see how we go i'll see how i go for time I want to test that roof that's an early on thing that i want to try let's hope and pray that the roof works as it should if it don't then that's a problem so yeah so we'll come back uh, shortly once i've uh, moved it uh, and got the uh, bumper off then we'll be back i just started it up sounds really rough that's because the front panel is uh, against the block obviously so it's uh, vibrating um as you can see the engine lights on it came up and said check engine i'm hoping that's probably going to be a um, oxygen sensor which has been damaged that's happened before um, it's not the 28th oh, it is the 28th of January today isn't it uh, 2020 obviously uh, so I'm going to switch this off because I don't know how much water in it or oil is in it and it is vibrating like a good and while I'm here I'm going to try the roof though I uh, can't actually remember how you do this here we go <sighs> see if it works it's going back nice blue sky today gets to there and then it goes back again yes it works it goes all the way back that's good let's hope it shuts now <laughs> otherwise that would be a problem i think you just oh it stops there press it again and it comes back hope i'm filming this properly and then again to its final position yeah that all works lovely that's good that's a bonus do like a Brucey bonus. Um, yep, yeah, right, let's switch the engine off. Horrible noise it's making. Um, stereo, we've got a thing missing there. Uh, what else we got? We've got, an, we got the um, locking wheel nut key, which is good. Uh, being a convertible, I don't know where they actually put the paint code. I, put, I think I know what the paint code is. Um, and I think there was, for this year, only one paint code. Which is it's very, very, it's the same as the, uh, I think it's the same as the Arbatha recently had. And... I had a black sport as well uh, i think it's the same it's very very slightly metallic black not really metallic but it is not a flat color um so yeah it all looks good really i think um so uh, yeah as i said in the previous little excerpt I, i've moved it now so it's straighter on my driveway uh, i'm gonna now get that um, bumper off and then we'll come back it's a bumpers off as you can see both Reinforcing bars themselves are untouched. Well, that's it's got a very, very slight ding in there. I think that was from previous because it's not, not from this accident because the, everything was up here. As you can see, this is that's there's the point of impact just there. So that condenser is bent, it may bend back into shape. I'm gonna try because it's so much nicer if you don't have to replace that. Obviously. The impact over is over sort of over this side so it's sort of bent here but not bent there so it may be of no use when i come to bolt it onto the new radiator it might not go on but i'm going to try 
Um, the tip of the reinforcement bar is bent over there, as you can see. But that's easy enough. The last car before last was the same as that. That tip, you've seen me on other videos, the tip of the chassis leg, which is bent over. The chassis leg's not swayed, it's completely straight. As you can see here, it's just that tip. Once I get the front panel bolts undone, um, that'll just be a matter of heating it up and banging it back again. So that's not too bad at all. So um, I'm gonna start taking off the front panel bolts now. So hopefully the bumper's coming today, but even if it doesn't come today, as long as it comes tomorrow, if it doesn't come tomorrow, failing that, I've got a white bumper that I can put on it for the time being, just to get it onto the road. Um, that wing is completely fine. This wing is very, very slightly bent over here. But once I've got it all, got the headlights out and what have you, um, tomorrow or another time, I shall try and straighten that up. If I can't straighten it up decently, I'll get a new one. But at the moment, I'm hoping to save it because there's nothing wrong with it apart from that little tip that's bent over a bit. Um, because the, the bumper may not fit in properly depending on how much it's bent it doesn't look that much bent but we'll see anyway i'm going to start taking off the front panel now and uh, i don't know if i'm going to take it off entirely today i might well do um as i say i've got to go work at one o'clock so i don't want to spend all morning and it is freezing it's a nice sunny day today but it is freezing my hands are absolutely freezing i'm gonna to have to rake my gloves out i think i'm putting my gloves on to carry on um, you know, this is a hobby of mine. It's much nicer in the spring and the summer. Not so nice this time of year. Um, but this one's got to be done today, or well, tomorrow, for the driveway to be done. Started on Thursday. Then I'm going to have about, it's going to take about a week to do my drive, and then I'm going to have to leave it about a week before we drive on it. So I'm not going to be able to touch the car for two, for about two weeks, which is annoying. But driveway is well overdue to be done. Got to be done. Anyway, I'm going to take the front panel off, and we'll be back again. Right, so front panel's off. It's about ooh, 20 minutes later. So within half an hour, I'm at this stage. So I've done so many of these. Now this is, by the way, this is car number 50. So it's a bit of an anniversary, really. How long will it be before I get to 100? So right, let's quickly go over what we've done. So we've taken, the, obviously, the front panel's off. Well and truly bent up. Radiator's no good. Um, obviously, I've disconnected the pipes down there. That's obviously all broken, which is why the radiator itself is all right. It's always that that goes. It's split at the side as well. The fan looks to be okay. Hopefully it'll work, but it certainly looks to be okay. We'll test that before uh, installing it, just to make sure it spins freely on its bearings. Um, sometimes the, the resistor will go to stop it cutting in when the aircon comes on, but um, they can always be changed. I did that in the light green one I did recently. Uh, got to take the, the horn off so the that I've straightened that up a little bit it was more bent than that I think I'm gonna get away with that providing it's I can't see that it's lost any fluid because you'd see the green dye down there if it had uh, lost any of its gas and I don't think it has so for the time being I'm gonna put it back on the front of the radiator it's only held on by four eight mil bolts so I'm gonna I'm gonna bolt it on for now and then once the driveway's done and I'll get the car back again, back down there again, we can uh, double check it. But I think it's probably okay. Um, the oxygen sensor, lambda sensor looks okay. Although it might be, actually it might be bent in there. Because this has been, this has taken a bit of a hit, so I'll probably replace that. I've got some spares of those, so I'll replace that. I think I might just as a matter of course, replace the lambda sensor anyway. That's probably what's causing the problem. Um, I haven't done any diagnostics on it yet. I just obviously has, I've shown you everything that I've done so far. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to change the cam belt on this, get my mobile mechanic to do that. It's beyond my capabilities. So uh, obviously I've got to fill it with fluid um, to get it off the driveway, but we will um, have to drain it down again. So for the time being, this isn't very good. It looks a bit dirty. What came out of there, a bit rusty. But for the time being, I'm going to put that back in, uh, top it up just to get the car going. And then once we, uh, when I drain it down again, I'll put new fluid in it. So yeah, so far so good. Um, there's the tip that's bent over. I'm going to straighten that in a minute. So all I do is heat that up and then whack it and it will straighten it right back up. And then I may as well, um, I don't know what I'll be doing for time, but I haven't been out there very long, but I don't think it's even 10 o'clock yet. So we'll, um, we'll crack on 
and I might as well get the front panel on. I've just got to take the fan off of here and install it onto the uh, onto the new um, front panel, which is at the back of the garage there somewhere, which came off of the previous car that I broke up, which is good, saves me buying one. It's nice, free parts are even better. Right, so I'm gonna take this fan off first, put it to one side for the time being, then uh, take the horn off, get rid of this out of the way, um, and then offer up the, the fan to the new front panel. Uh, and then we might as well mount it, I suppose, and uh, at least get some of the bolts done up. We might as well get them all done up, I think. Uh, yeah, may as well. Um, while I've got the front panel off, I'll change that to smiley face and cat cover. Might as well get that done. The last time I changed a uh, lambda sensor, I couldn't get it undone. Took it to the garage uh, where I'll get the MOTs done and said to them, can they change it? They sheared it off and I ended up having to get a new cat, which was really annoying. But uh, I got a second hand one on eBay for 75 quid, which wasn't too bad, but um, I've got spare Lambda sensors, so I'll just use one of those. Um, but I'm gonna attempt to take it. I'm gonna give it a good spray first. I might do that now, actually, because it's easier to get to once I've, uh, while I've got everything off the front. So I'll, yeah, I'll do that and then uh, change that and then change that um, silver panel at the front. So that's the, uh, the cover off, this is the new one. Uh, got the lambda sensor out just as a matter of interest. That's the um, catalytic converter down there, the exhaust manifold catalytic converter down there. So I'm going to uh, put this on and then put the new lambda sensor in. There you go, it's the new one on. A couple of minutes later, just to show you the old one, as you can see there, look how bent it is. So I think you can safely um, guess that that was what was causing the engine light to come up. Uh, we'll know once we get it all back together again, but hopefully that was the case. Look how bent that is. So uh, this is the new front panel, which came off of a pop. So therefore, uh, it has a pop fan on it, which is a really basic fan. So I should be taking that off. Fitments are exactly the same, so I'll just be taking that off. Uh, and that's the uh, fan off the car, which is perfectly good, straight, no splits, nothing. Uh, so I'll be putting that on. The hose luckily was in the same place. That's I took this off, but luckily I've put it to uh, and I've done that hose as well, same as I've done the one I've just taken off, so I can uh, just plug it straight back in again and do it up. So that's the next job. There you see they, uh, the chassis leg end tip, which was bent, is now perfectly straight. So that was heated up and then hit with a hammer. And it bends back really, really easy once it's hot. It's still hot now, um, so I need to let it cool down, pour some water over it maybe, um, and then we'll offer up the front panel. Okay, what I'm doing now, um, I've got the front panel on, um, just hanging by one bolt by the side at the top. So just there and there, just to stop it falling off. So basically fed the um, condenser through through that hole there with the pipe work. Um, and then I've put the four bolts back into that. So that's all nice and straight and straight enough, as long as, it, as, long as it's uh, holding the gas, which I think it is. Um, so then what I do, once it's hanging there, obviously it's not in the right position height-wise. So what I do is I jack it up until those holes line up on one side. Although I've got it jacked up in the middle, it's always the same that it's not hanging equally. So I jack it up to get one side. I've done those four bolts up on the bottom. I'm now gonna release the jack and then move it over slightly and jack it up on the other side so the holes line up on the other side as well. So I get the bottom one on. Then I need to straighten that tip on the top one and then put the top one on as well. And then we'll be ready to um, connect it all back up again. This is going much better than I thought it was gonna. Good morning, welcome back. As you can see, this is the following day. Uh, I managed to get the front panel on yesterday. Got it all plumbed back in. Everything's back on. Uh, I've sort of test fitted a headlight. As you can see, there's a massive gap there. Like that you can see that that wing has moved over. Like I think I may, I may have done that when I was pulling that around. So I'm hoping it's not. It's only held on by one bolt at the moment. But I'm hoping that might push back into position because uh, I really don't. It doesn't feel dented or out of shape. So I'm hoping it's just that tip there uh, and this bit. I can all uh, this side. I can push all back in again once the headlights in the correct position. I'm hoping it'll be okay. So it seems really silly to replace a wing just for that. 
Um, one thing I have just discovered, so I filled it all up, filled it all up with fluid. I put the old fluid back in, the horrible rusty stuff, and topped it out with water, because I'm literally only going to drive it over to my mother-in-law's about a mile away and leave it there until my driveway is done. Uh, so I filled that up, bled it from the bleed screw just there, um, run it up, it's all run up to heat now. I'm going to just take that off slightly, release it very, very slowly. It's obviously it's under slight pressure. Just to let any air out. No bubbles coming from down there now. So I think it's all bled. I filled it until uh, I took that bleed screw out completely and then I filled it until fluid started to come out of the hole. Put it back in. Give it some revs and that seems to have uh, purged it already. It literally took five or ten minutes to do that. Uh, but what I have just discovered, I've just been cleaning the windscreen, all the um, stuff that Copar put all over the windscreen, plus the stickers. And I've noticed, I don't know if you can see it, it's a crack. Crack on the windscreen. You can't actually feel it, but well, you can just about feel it with your finger now. But that's rather annoying, that means the, the number for the uh, windscreen's got to be replaced starting down at this corner so I imagine that probably happened where it's under stress when uh, the accident happens which is really annoying so it means I've got to put a new windscreen in but as I was cleaning the windscreen I noticed see this black line it goes all the way up there all the way up there and then down here now I'm thinking what the hell is that it's not heated windscreen because these cars don't have heated windscreens and then I realized of course there's no aerial so I'm uh, assuming it's probably the radio aerial, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm wondering whether there's another way of, because I don't really want to have to pay extra for a, um, a windscreen that's got an aerial built into it. Uh, so I'm hoping that there might be a way of uh, putting another aerial in somewhere to save doing that. That way I can just have an ordinary windscreen put in because I dread to think how much one is with an aerial. I will get a price on my normal windscreen fitter. Um, I normally pay £140 fitted for a normal windscreen. Um, I don't know if they're any different on the convertible. Probably not, I don't suppose. Apart from the fact it's got that, what looks like an aerial. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get a price for that. Uh, but that's really annoying. Uh, so as you can see, obviously I've taken the bonnet off. Uh, for the time being, I'm putting a red bonnet on. So I've got a white bonnet and a red bonnet. I haven't got a black bonnet yet. I haven't found one in colour yet. There's not anywhere that will either post it. One's, one's got damage on it. Uh, I don't really want to put a damaged one on. I'd have to try and paint it a little bit. It's only on the edges. It's on one edge, but it's just annoying. Um, so for the time being, I'm just putting a red bonnet on it and hope that one comes up on eBay in the right colour. Um, I got the, uh, the bumper arrived yesterday. It's wrapped up in that black plastic at the back of the garage there. So uh, with a bit of luck. I'll get that on today. Well, I've got to get it on today. Get the lights on. What I have just discovered as well is we have the extra cable down here. So the bumper that was on it didn't have any spotlight, uh, any fog lights, uh, but it had the car has the capability of fog lights because it's got the plug. I've done this before. Um, I haven't looked at the button, but I'm imagining the button has got just the one, the, the rear fog light uh, icon on it. But what you can do in micro, micro ECU, that's uh, micro. Uh, multi ECU scan, you can enable the fog lights so that that, that fog light switch then behaves as a two um, a two position switch or three position switch off, front on and back on and then off again. Um, you can change the switch itself if you want to just to have the, the drawing of the, um, of the front fogs which I have probably even got possibly uh, so I may swap that as well but I think I've got some fog lights um, I'm not sure whether I've got the surrounds or not but it might be worth buying some if I can get some cheap enough. If you've got the cable there, so obviously they put the loom in for fog lights but not put fog lights on the car. So I think it's probably worth doing it. It makes the car look a bit nicer, I think, especially in black. So, so I'll, uh, I'll rake those out and hopefully they still work and I can do that. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna put the red bonnet on in a minute. Uh, there's not a lot of petrol in it, so I'm not gonna run it up for too much longer. Uh, it seems to be running okay. I might, I probably will get it a service. I'll change the oil, I'll change the plugs filters and so on. Um, may even get it serviced. Well, I might, may even get it serviced. That is a service. I may even uh, take it to a garage and get it serviced properly rather than me doing it, but I probably will do it myself. Save money. Why, why pay a garage hundred and something pounds and I can do it myself for free? 
up and apart. So uh, yeah, so so far so good today. So I got a lot done yesterday, so I didn't have to rush out here today. Um, obviously, I need to get this done and drivable on the road sometime today because I've got to get it off the drive. The drive's got to be empty today by tomorrow morning uh, for the garage uh, for the uh, shed. To, oh God, garage shed! I can't speak <laughs> for the uh, driveway to be started tomorrow morning. So I'm going to crack on, I'm going to switch the engine off, uh, I've got to clean all the stuff off the back window where it says ice, hopefully that hasn't got a smash in it as well, but cracking it and, uh, and then we'll uh, start putting the bumper together and uh, get the bumper on. Okay so there we go, I've uh, got the red bonnet on it, I'll leave it like that, looks quite good, multi-coloured car, a bit like that um, Volkswagen Polo, Neapolitan, just doing lots of different colours. So yeah, it's on, nice and shiny. I've had this since August, this bonnet. It's now, what, January the 29th today. Uh, so I've had it since August 2019. Um, literally been still in the packet, packaging that it was delivered in. I bought it because I was doing a few red cars at the time and I thought I'll just get it um, for when I need one on a red car. I hadn't even unpacked it, only cost 80 pounds in pretty much perfect condition. So that'll do for now and it, it doesn't fit properly. Um, but it's, uh, it's just on, and it closes on the catch and opens fine. What I normally do with these is I make sure it closes properly before the headlights are on. I've had problems in the past where I can't get it to close, can't get the bonnet to close, and I've discovered that the, head, the headlights were stopping it. So the front panels were too high one side where the headlights um, sit. So the headlights themselves were too high. Um, so what I do now, although I forgot to do it on this occasion, um, is I test close it while the headlights are off um, and then put the headlights on, make sure it still closes properly. Um, but it's, it's closing anyway. Um, one top tip is when you do the first test closure, make sure there's no bumper on. Because in the odd occasion that for some reason that bonnet catch isn't working, it's then, I don't know how you would even get it. I mean, it, it can, obviously can be done, but I have no idea how you would get the bonnet open if that bonnet catch didn't work, at least with the bumper off, you can sort of get to the mechanism under there. Uh, it's never happened to me, but I have heard of it happening to people. So yeah, good idea to uh, to do that. Um, so next thing I've got to do is, as I say, clean that back window. I've sprayed um, spray and shine all over the windscreen now, so I've got to clean that off. Uh, get that, I nearly called it graffiti. The word ice that's on the back window. I'd still love to know what that's all about, ice. I don't know. I'm going to have to find out about that. I'm obviously going to treat all this. I'm not going to bother doing this yet. I've got some Auto Glim soft top cleaner and restorer, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to give that a go at some point. Um, oh, it actually came from Ancaster in Catford, which is my local Fiat dealers where I'm taking my uh, 500X on Thursday. Uh, it's interesting. Um, yeah, so I've got to get that off and then I'm going to unpack the bumper which is now in the back garden and get the lights and trim. I can't even remember what's on this bumper now. I've got a feeling it's already got trim on it. I'm just praying it's the right black. I think it is. Pretty sure it is, but hopefully it will be. Um, get the trim, whatever trim is missing. I think all the trim's on it, all the chrome trim. It's just a matter of the fog light surrounds. And I'm going to, as I said, have a look and see what fog lights I've got and I'm going to put the fog lights on it as long as I've got the parts. I'm not gonna buy any fog lights to do it, but if I've got them, which I think I have, uh, I don't mind buying the surrounds, but I don't wanna buy the lights as well. It's just adding expense to the car. Um, but yeah, now I've got the extra expense of a bloody windscreen as well, doesn't help. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look, see what we've got. Um, so I'm gonna dress the bumper, or get the bumper unpacked, and then I'll, I'll take a short video of that, and then uh, we'll get the bits and pieces on it and then offer it up and hopefully it'll fit nicely. I think the wing bracket may need replacing actually. <laughs> Looks like it's broken. I've got some of those anyway. I think the other side's okay. Um, but again, you know, I'm not gonna worry about that now. It's just a matter of getting it together and off the drive. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect today. Anyway, so I'll be back shortly when I've unpacked the bonnet. Bumper, I keep saying bonnet, bumper. Okay, so I unpacked the bumper. Um, the, two, the four lots of chrome trim was on it and the, the middle grille was on it. So I've taken uh, the, the 
fog light blanks that were on the on the other bumper were not really nice, so I've um, put some some used ones I've got from another car. Um, that side DRL was fine. That side I've just done plastic welding on. I've added an old badge. Um, it's not in fantastic condition. I'll do for now. I'll probably get a new one. Uh, I've got to take the number plate off the bumper just to put it on for now. It's broken, but I've got new ones on the way. But I, as you know, I need to get this car moved today. So uh, it's only got the last letter is half a bit missing, but it's just hard luck. I'm going to have to drive it like that for the time being. Um, done some plastic welding on this. I've done other videos on plastic welding. So basically what I've done, one of the tabs was okay. So on here, uh, if you want to see about plastic welding, I have done uh, other videos on it, but it looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? Uh, the shiny stuff you can see is super glue. So what I do first is I super glue them back on into position, give it a few minutes. Um, I then go round it with the, the pointed tool there and just melt the plastic between the lug and the, the rest of the light um, just to hold it a bit better. And then we put in these using uh, this little glorified, I suppose it's like a glorified soldering iron really. It gets hot. Um, these are the ones we use. So they're corner ones. They come in, in different types. These are corner ones. Got some wave ones there as well, which I've used. But uh, the corner ones are used all the way along there. Uh, so you let, let that, um, obviously let the plastic dry, which it has now. I then put some more super glue on, just hold it. Uh, and then I use a, a rotary tool to cut off the excess and uh, and then they'll be put back on the car. Uh, of course, no one will be any the wiser. They'll be in the bumper. It's It's silly to throw away perfectly good lights when all they've got is broken lugs. The headlights you can buy lugs for, um, which you, you basically trim off what's left of the old lugs. And on all the headlights there are screw holes uh, and they just screw on, which is really good. Uh, so I've saved many, many a headlight um, from the big headlight graveyard uh, by, by doing that. But uh, on these, you can't get repair kits for these, so I repair them myself. Perfectly good light, almost as good as new. So that'll be going on in a minute. And then I took, oh, I also took the towing eye ring off on the bumper, on the old bumper and put it on here. The bumper is, is the right color, thankfully. There are a few scratches on it, but I think a lot of them will polish off. Again, I'm not gonna bother doing that now. Once the drive's done, I get the car back and all that sort of thing will, uh, will be done. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So the next thing I've got to do, is just cut off all these bits, mount the light into the bumper, and then that bumper thing complete apart from the number plate and then I can uh, put it on the car. Okay, here we go. So there it is, done. So I've been out here a couple of hours, I suppose, uh, finishing off today. Obviously you can see there's a big gap there. That obviously needs adjusting, which I'll obviously do. Um, I said the bonnet all needs adjusting anyway, but of course I'm not gonna bother because it's got a red bonnet. I think it actually looks quite good with a red bonnet. Um, so yeah, all done. The lights are all on. All tested, all working. Um, topped up the fluid. Well's okay. Um, so yeah, I spent about two hours out here today and probably about two hours yesterday. So all in all, less than, less, certainly less than five hours this has taken me to repair this. I know it's not completely finished, but it's pretty much finished. It's taken me less than five hours. That's not bad, is it? When you think that was a write-off. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So this is going to make a wonderful car for someone. If I was a girl, I'd keep it myself. But then, as you know, I'm looking for an hour bath at the moment. Sun's out today, so I didn't get a very good view of it. It's still dirty. The picture's on Copart. It was quite clean. Um, and the reason I didn't um, film me buying it was because I actually bought it while I was at work. So obviously I couldn't really film it. Oh, I just noticed it's got a little code number on there that I've got to, I'll get some uh, cleaner on there to clean that off. I'm gonna give it a go, trying to um, just get that green off. I'm just gonna use a bucket and a sponge, normal sort of cleaning stuff just for now. I have got, as I say, I've got some auto glim stuff, but just for now I'm gonna use uh, that just to make you look a little bit better. I know it's only gonna go and sit on my mother's, mother-in-law's driveway for a couple of weeks, but. I just want it to look a little bit better. And of course I don't want that green to get any worse. Wheels need a bit of a clean up. That, that one's a bit um, scuffed. So I'll probably, I don't know, 
might repair it, might get a new one, might leave it, don't know. We'll see. People never seem to be that bothered about the wheels, to be honest. That one's all right. It's just the curbside, isn't it? And that one's all right. I think they'll clean up. Tires are all okay, I think. Yeah, that one's okay, that one's okay. Don't think it's gonna need any tires. Oh no, that one. No, oh, no, it's, it's legal. It's legal, it'll pass the MOT. So it is MOT'd already, I can't remember when too. It's something like July or August, I think. Um, but obviously I always put a new MOT on them, unless it's got like 10, 11 months and I don't bother, but this has got maybe maybe five or six months, something like that, but I will get it, to, we'll get a fresh MOT on it. Hopefully, there wasn't any advisories the last time. It passed flying colours, so hopefully we'll do it again. So, so I'm not gonna give it a good clean up yet. There's no point. I've got a load of cardboard in there that the bumper was wrapped up in and a load in the boots. I'm gonna get rid of that en route as well. So that's it. That's the job for today. The car is now gonna be moved off the drive. And um, we'll be filming. I think I'm probably gonna upload this video anyway now or today. Um, and then we'll come back once, the, uh, once I get the car back and I'll get it finished off. So obviously I've still got to get a bonnet. I've got to get that windscreen done now. I'm going to try and find out if there's another way of use, doing the uh, radio aerial rather than in the screen. That way I can then just get an ordinary screen put on. And I may well, as I said, mentioned earlier, probably put some fog lights in it as well. I think that would set it off nicer. So this is going to be a cracking little car. It's a shame I haven't got the bonnet yet. It sticks out like a sore thumb with a red bonnet, but sailor me. Um, as soon as I get one, I shall uh, change it. That's it for now. So I'm going to upload this. Um, please, if you've uh, not subscribed to uh, to my channel before, and it's only a small channel. I've only got, I don't know, I'm not even sure how many subscribers. I've got a couple of hundred, something like that, maybe. Um, I'd appreciate it if you did subscribe. Um, it's it's it obviously encourages me to do more videos. I'm going to do more videos on how to actually do things and I'm going to start doing some time lapse like other people do as well. Um, one thing I want to do is uh, the Bluetooth um, control unit that's uh, in the back, um, inside, back quarter, um, because a lot of people have problems with those and want to change them and uh, I have told people on forums how to do it but it'd be good to do a video on that so next time I break one I shall uh, film that bit getting that out or if I ever have to change one. But uh, yeah that's it for now so I'm going to upload this today. Um, please uh, if you've got any comments to make make the comments be nice and um yeah and i'll upload some more once i've uh, once it's all finished thanks for watching